I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I had to do it. We knew this was coming. What's up, everybody? My name is Sir Medieval, and if you somehow missed that angry mob with pitchforks on your way in, we finally got ourselves some of that PvP blog for New World. On top of the system itself, we also got some more information about how key systems were going to work. And although this entire thing has just left myself, and I'm sure many others with just more questions than answers, it's time to dig in. First, I'd like to begin by saying that no matter what we talk about today, I am still standing by in support of full loot PvP or PvP servers because of the unique experiences and longevity that it can bring to a game as we talked about in our previous videos. However, we also just yesterday, or I suppose two days ago now because I haven't gone to sleep yet, just finished going over how the lack of MMOs and games in general from this genre of sandbox-like titles has left me just wanting more. So much more for getting just even a taste of that freedom. And I said that for that reason and many others, no matter what happened with the PvP system, I will still feel as ready as a cucumber to jump into New World. And that's also something I intend to stand by. So to continue on this though, I know many of you may be feeling some mixed emotions right now. If you haven't guessed it already, the PvP system was in fact confirmed by both the PvP blog and the New World Q&A video that they did to be opt-in with the ability to get unknown extra bonuses for flagging up, which I'm really crossing my fingers is only possible to do within a safe zone so people can't flag down out in the wilderness at the very least. And this was something that a good amount of the PvP community was afraid of because on top of that, it appears that you no longer have the chance of losing anything upon death and criminal intent is completely removed. Now, of course, we could go all day long about subjects like this and how it could negatively affect the economy and supply and demand for crafted gear or the lack of feeling of danger while traveling in the open world. But none of that matters right now. The truth I believe at this point is that we are far, far too close to release for anything major we suggest at this point to be switched around before launch. Even though I still feel that PvP servers might have still worked in this regard, but Amazon has in mostly clear terms explained to us what they want the PvP system to be and why, at least during its launch phase. But my friends, as I'm sure many, many wise men and women have said, this is not the end. I'm sure that you're just as tired as I am from switching from game to game in this genre, just looking for a home or maybe even something to burn a few months on to enjoy yourself in the process. It gets frustrating dumping all of your hope and desire into something just to watch it turn sour and get turned upside down from your perspective. I totally get it because I've been there too, and that's why it's about time we stop running from these situations and face them head on. If you still think there's even slightly a chance that New World is still a game that you can enjoy, but you don't exactly agree with the direction it's going right now, as a player, your voice still matters. That's why the strongest thing you can do right now is continuing to give feedback, solutions, and workarounds in a respectable manner. It might not be perfect and it might not come right away at the start of the game, but this here is a title that is completely oozing with promise and potential. Just this morning, the whole lot of us were probably collectively gushing about these recently added new combat clips on New World's Steam page, alongside the legendary confirmation that we are in fact about to get our Gandalf the Grey on. That right there should say alone how this could still work if the community is willing to do just that, work together. I know we don't like doing it in these types of situations, but there could be compromises, there could be improvements, and without a doubt there could be solutions. So first, let's talk about what else we found out during this PvP blog specifically. They actually give a few more hat tips to the territory and corruption system during both the video and the blog post itself that many people might not have realized. Case in point, we might actually be getting dynamic events in the game. Take a look at this. We have also deeply invested in PvE, creating many new features that pit players against challenging enemies, placing them in perilous situations, and introducing a new enemy type, including corruption breaches, world events that open up the ground and spew out dark energy and enemies alike. That has got to be a dynamic event, and who knows what else we might find inside the game. In the interview, it's said that we may get activities similar to dungeons and raids, but they won't be in a traditional sense. Instead of teleporting inside them, they would be points of interest throughout the map that we would find throughout the world, alongside the confirmation of bosses found around the world of Eternum. And I know it might not sound like much on paper, but those aspects in the horde mode is a really good start. And on top of that, they actually mentioned full-on siege warfare during their news, stating that we could upgrade gear and build better defenses, or on the attacking side, even make use of siege weapons and towers. Which of course, again, doesn't sound too crazy on paper, but in the thick of battle, with constant fire from a trebuchet or catapult, or standing behind a giant gate as the enemy ram smashes up against our fort, something like that can enhance the crap out of the territory system for sure. 
It's also mentioned that the territory war may or may not necessarily be instanced. Dot Lane describes it as an event where it shields everyone but the 50v50 participants in the battle outside of the settlement zone. So we might be able to still crack out the picnic chairs and watch from the sidelines, maybe play some poker and stuff like that too. And the appointment system that we originally talked about previously that came from the German article, that does get mentioned here as well. Now before we dive into suggestions and solutions for the New World Open PvP, let's talk about how it works a bit. So to start off, opting into PvP is solely tied to the factions, and you will not be able to join a faction until level 10. And as for the rewards or bonuses we get for opting in, that part we don't know yet and it still leaves us with a lot of questions. But they also said that they haven't fully fleshed out the system yet and maybe that can mean that we'll see some good ones. I've been trying to think in my head what might be a really good bonus to see, and I'm not entirely sure yet. But if we were to see around 20-50% to 50 for experience gained, money gained, and maybe even a bonus towards better loot, I could see it being a really good incentive for players. On top of that, to finally get to some suggestions and solutions for the game, if they really are dead set on going for the opt-in route, I think one good way we can start getting more benefits in-game for PvPers would be some sort of honor system and a leaderboard. The players that want to experience fighting all day long and want to be given the opportunity to turn in currency for resources, gear, and other things that you would obtain normally through farming would be a good thing. But then also having that leaderboard system to show off how much time, dedication, and bush camping skill we really all have would be really nice. And on top of that, a system that I really liked from Ascent Infinite Realm is that if you were in the leaderboards, whether it was player vs environment or player vs player, which that game did have leaderboards for it too, you could get rewards, sometimes exclusive ones depending on how high up you were. Maybe even things like special costumes or mounts if that becomes a thing in New World. And also maybe even house decorations or gear. But of course you'd have to worry about people doing things like win trading, but overall it would probably have more benefits than consequences. Another thing we could get, and this ties directly into the factions, is special titles, outfits, and bonuses for the highest ranking people in these factions. Make people commanders, warlords, or maybe even kings, queens, and emperors. And it doesn't have to be entirely like ESO where the emperor might become really powerful in game. Although it would be kind of cool to see if it took at least two to three players to take down one person because of how powerful they got, but still. And also something that would have been cool is the bounty hunting system. This is just one thing I wanted to include because about a week or so ago I had mentioned on my stream that if they did keep the bounty hunting profession and open world PKing in, that it would be really cool to see a system where people could spec into bounty hunting and then track players that committed crimes. Maybe you could see their last known position on the map and then travel over to it, and then see an ethereal copy of what the player looks like and then maybe even some tracks to go off of. Then you might be able to pinpoint their location faster for each crime they commit and that could also spark bounty hunting guilds. That could have been a really cool mechanic if they kept it in, but I can only assume because criminal intent is gone that bounty hunting is following it out the door as well. And now of course is the very last suggestion that I have, which would be for open world PvP zones. At this point, it's probably far too late to change anything drastic where the first zones have open world PvP that can be initiated, but maybe this could be something to consider for future zones in response to the massive feedback this has sparked. Maybe three or six months down the line, New World could get entirely new areas that were strictly open world PvP with full loot and gave the same type of rewards at endgame or maybe even more of them or better ones. Maybe we could have things like dimensional rifts that we can find around the map and travel to, or open world or closed arenas and battlegrounds to supplement this stuff as well, and with the dimensional rifts, then we can fight against other players and monsters or strictly other players and try to earn some good rewards. Or you could even have open world PvP initiated world bosses or dynamic events. Maybe even new zones from expansions later down the line where you could earn double the amount or close to the amount of resources and experience you would see in normal zones. It doesn't have to lean mostly towards the player vs environment side because that's what people are expecting from the Lord of the Rings MMO. New World can definitely lean both ways and it could work. If any studio could pull something like this off, I'd be willing to bet that the one that we have here before us would be one of them. But all in all folks, let me know what you think about these changes down below. If you need to get rid of that pent up rage out in those comments, just let it all out people, there's no judgments here. It may or may not have been what you were hoping for, but that doesn't mean the fight for those features has to be over. Those of us who are still planning to play the game will of course do our very best to drive the game onto a good path. But ultimately, we'll of course have to see how everything goes down. We can only cross our fingers or find other stuff to distract us from here. Whether you dislike these changes or like them, let's hope to a better gaming year for 2020 all around. The world already knows we really need one.